Uh, the uh, transportation business is plagued with a lot of problems. There are two major ones. Nobody's ever been able to solve this problem. But they don't even understand that they're creating the problem. <clears throat> but anyway, they have, uh, it's the high turnover. Drivers jump from trucking company to trucking company. The average turnover for the trucking industry is, uh, I think it's 94% is the average. That's an average? That means you have almost your entire staff that turns over in one year. And I experienced that when I started up. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, drivers, when they would leave, they usually did something to the truck. Uh, they would leave it somewhere. You had to go try to find it. The tr um, tracking back then was very expensive. You didn't, they didn't even really have much of it back then. So um, it could be a ex very expensive proposition when they take trucks and you don't know where they are. Fortunately, now I have tracking and everything, so I don't have that issue. But... Um, the other problem that the industry has faced and can't get away from is getting drivers to take care of the trucks that they have. They treat it like a rental car. It's like by the time you could buy a brand new truck that is $100,000, 100000 and uh, plus another uh, thirty to sixty or 70000 for a trailer. Uh, and um, drivers just don't treat it like it's their own thing. And it's not like a car, a small car, it's a big vehicle. So when they create damage, it, it's not an inexpensive proposition. So now what happens is the industry, because there's a shortage of drivers, who really wants to be on the road driving all the time? You probably would never do that or even consider doing it. It's a good thing to do on an occasional trip, but it's just not something that anybody really would enjoy doing on a normal basis. These are usually guys that probably were kids that you picked on in high school which means that they were kind of outcasts. They felt like they never really had close friends anyway, distant from the family because of that. Uh, uh, maybe not much of a family anyway to begin with. And so they feel, I'm out on the road. At least I can see the country. And they drive and drive and drive. You're talking 10,000 miles a month or more. And that's a lot of driving. So they get frustrated after a while. Other drivers especially don't understand. These big, heavy trucks can't get out of their way fast enough. It's not like they can speed up or slow down like a car. So these guys are frustrated a lot. And so they create their own, they, have, they, they, they get tired of doing what they're doing. They think something different might be better. There's no, nothing to change their, their thought process since that's the way the industry has always been. So I wanted to solve a problem. How do we keep people in the company that don't ever want to leave and take care of the trucks that they've, they're driving. So, here's what I found out. I designed a program called a six-year retirement program. And um, how it works is like this. Uh, I will put out 10 grand for somebody to buy a truck. Now, they're make, uh, do that 10 grand, I'm gonna get that 10 grand back, but not now. I'm gonna put out the 10 grand for that person to get that truck and because he probably doesn't have good credit to be able to get that truck, I let him borrow my credit. I co-sign for him on the loan. I've been doing this a while, so it, it, I, get, I get approved already. So uh, when I co-sign for this individual, he's going to be getting a truck. Now, his truck payments on a $150,000 truck are going to be in the neighborhood of about $2,600 a month. <clears throat> so you're, and since everybody's paid weekly, you take the weekly amount, you divide that, uh, you take the monthly amount times it by 12, divided by 52, and that tells you what your truck payment is going to be on a weekly settlement. Uh, um, so they're going to be making that truck payment. Um, but secondly is, and their insurance, and they're paying for their own fuel. When we get a load that say is seven or $8,000, they're going to be receiving 68.4% of that of that amount that we get from the customer. And the, what that 68.4 pays for is their truck payment and, and uh, all their fuel, insurance, any other costs that they may have had. If they borrowed any money, they can borrow money on their fuel card. And whatever's left is what their take home pay is for that. And now, uh, unlike other trucking companies, which this is part that they create their own problem, they give sign on bonuses. Come to work for us to attract drivers and we'll pay you a $1,500 sign-on bonus. But they don't just give it to you right when you come to the front door. That would be stupid. They would come take it and leave. And so they, 
they, what they do is after you've been there 30 days, then you'll get half of it. When you're there 90 days, you'll get the other half of it. So now you're here for 90 days. you got enough 90 days experience. Do you want to stay? You came there because of the sign-on bonus. And when you saw their sign-on bonus in the ad that's in those big, thick books at the truck stops, everybody has one out there. They... Um, they decide, oh my God, look at this one, because they got nothing to do and they're, they're shut down for 10 hours a day. So they go through and they look at the magazines that are in there and they say, oh, look how much they're paying to sign on with this company. Maybe I should take a look at that. I'll talk to them, at least call and find out some information. How does that sign on bonus pay? And that's where they create their own problem, just as repetitions, it's not gone away. So here's my solution. <clears throat> I wanted to give them the old one-two punch. So anyway. Uh, um, when they're making their truck payment, that amount that they make when they're with some other trucking company, other trucking companies, they, they really take advantage of the drivers overall. And the dr average driver out there, the statistics are showing, they make less than $40,000 per year. Doing all that driving, going out there, doing this crazy stuff. Uh, and because the trucking company is actually taking bits and pieces here and there, even though, like for example, when they buy fuel, uh, their fuel it, they tell them it's whatever they're selling the fuel price out there. Or they'll say you'll get eight cents off of what, whatever the pump price is. But I, every trucking company out there doesn't have a price off of that. They actually get whatever the cost is, and then they negotiate their cost plus. Uh, because most of the truck shops are all interlinked together. They're owned by just two or three different companies that are out there. You negotiate it with those companies. So it's what, what's called cost plus. It's whatever their cost is to bring that fuel to that particular location and six cents over that. So their profit margin is usually about maybe 30, 40, 50 cents more than that, sometimes more. But we get six cents over that. Now, so all these trucking companies are out there, they're saving 50, 60 cents per gallon on the fuel, but they're telling the drivers either it's pump price or uh, they, you're going to get eight cents off, or ten. I think the most I've heard is ten cents off per gallon whenever you go to these particular truck stops. So they're making money off the drivers that way, and they, that's not the only way. That's just the most, probably the most recent within the past eight to ten years. So um, anyway, I give my drivers all of the savings. Yes, it does cost me a little bit of time to negotiate that, set that up, and do some work on that. But and that's probably why they take some of that. But they think it's a profit stream, I guess. But I'd rather give it to my drivers. It just shows them that, oh my God, I've never seen this because they get a fuel sheet, they can see it. So anyway, um, that was number one, is being able to allow drivers to make more money. My drivers here uh, take home on average maybe between $1,200 to about maybe $2,500 per week. So they make a lot more here. Uh, and I make good money too, believe me, I'm, I'm okay. But, um, the, uh, uh, sorry, one of my drivers texting me. Uh, but anyway, um, the, uh, um, I'm thinking about what he's probably asking. Uh, so anyway, the, um, uh, by giving them this opportunity to, uh, to stay with me, and they, they, first of all, they're making good money, so they're making better money than they may have made before. Uh, but there's a better ending to this, and that is, the, um, as long as they take care of that truck and they're making all their payments throughout the six years that it's, that it's been here in our fleet, and then at the end of that six years, that $150,000 truck to begin with is now worth probably about 45 to 55 range because it's got 800,000 miles on it by this time after six years and um, it's probably not looking like it was brand new. So it's values down there, and uh, that's about normal in that range there. So when that truck is sold, let's say it sells right in the middle at 50,000, then that's when I take back my 10, so I can replace it with another truck. And the rest of the money that's there, I co-sign with that driver so that he can take all the money that's left and buy him trucks. Now, he's gonna be getting paid 76% on those trucks. What he's going to do, and I actually can do it for him through the accounting system. He doesn't have to actually do anything. I'll do it all through the uh, software. But um, what he's going to be doing is taking out of that 76% so, since I'm still making a very good profit on my 26, uh, 24%, uh, um, he's going to pay his driver 90% of that, which comes out to 68.4. So uh, that's where that driver makes that good income. He wants to stay here because he's getting good income, but, uh, uh, but at the end of that payoff, 
they can stop working if they're because if they're paying their drivers 90 percent and they're taking 10 the average trucker does about anywhere from 17,000 to 24,000 per month um, then uh, let's say an average of 20 is what their average average monthly is which that's pretty normal our truck our trucking company last year averaged per truck $180,000 per truck so uh, that's well that's above the average out there and they're much above the average so they're all making good money but there's a payoff at the end when they've got $20,000 revenue uh, on three trucks because if, if they've got let's say $45,000 left over and I'm going to co-sign with them on that finance uh, then um, they're going to have three to four trucks. So let's take three. Let's say it didn't really sell for very much and you only have three trucks. And you're going to be getting that $20,000 per month. You're paying your, your driver, which I'm doing, uh, that 90%. And um, everybody's on 1099. Done. Nobody's an employee since they're driving owned equipment. Um, then uh, uh, they're going to be making uh, on 20,000, 10% of that 20,000 since they're paying their driver 90%. So if you got 20,000 a month on three trucks, that's 60,000, that's 6,000 bucks a month coming in. And he doesn't have to do anything anymore. He can go home, watch Andy Griffith reruns. He can go fishing, do whatever he wants to do. And that's why the drivers want to come here. And that's why my turnover just stopped. I don't have drivers, unless there are still some guys that are just, they don't get it. I guess they don't understand that uh, they're making good money.